So in today's video, I want to uh, talk about something that I've seen happen in um, actual published research, um, which I find a bit problematic when it comes to um, some type of data and um, the actual uh, interpretation of what the model is saying when we are uh, using um, the uh, uh, keyfold clause validation uh, training scheme. Um, you, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about afterward, but um, usually what happens is that um, if there's no um, cross validation scheme in a training, like and it's just like training data, usually it's easy to say like, okay, this model is useless. How can it generalize? Um, but then uh, I, I've seen that even when you have um, uh, a cross validation scheme, sometimes the uh, the output of your model that is cross-validated um, could also be badly overfitted, uh, but you don't know about it. Um, uh, yeah, especially when we're talking about some specific sort of data, like say um, uh, brain data. So, for instance, EG data. I've seen this happen quite often, um, but we're, we're going to go through it um, through this paper, actually, uh, not through the whole thing, but just a, a particular section. Um, to, to highlight what I'm talking about. So this paper is emotion recognition from multi-channel AG so not using like uh, KNN. Um, so um, there's there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with uh, using EG or multi-channel. Uh, it's how they um, they validated their model that is actually learning something. So something about emotion that is problematic. Um, so uh, the data that they're like here they have like 99% accuracy, 80, 80, 92, 93, 95. Um, I'm almost certain that this is badly overfitted model. Um, and I've seen that, uh, especially with emotion, I don't know why, um, with this data set, um, it kind of happened over and over again. Um, but like, okay, so. What's the DAAP data set? Let's, let's, let's figure this out. So that's a, that, that's kind of data set. I think it's 32 uh, participants. They have a bunch of EG on them um, that look like this. If you look at those like power spectra uh, on, on, a, on a brain. Um, and then there's a, a whole bunch of other signals that are, are there. And they, they're looking, I believe, at movies or something like this. Or, and then they kind of do the uh, some sort of rating which we are using to to say emotion. There's nothing wrong with this data set. It's it's a perfectly fine benchmark. Um, it's how yeah, people are uh, some some people are using it um, to say something like we got a this amount of classification accuracy, um, so we de can detect emotion. So let's look at the, what they actually did. So they use this data set. Um, they uh, uh, looked at uh, some of the channels, so you, you have 32 EG channel, um, and then they were able to tell like the more channel you have, the more accuracy you get. So um, this is great, and they looked at a bunch of frequency. Um, let's jump directly at the part that I find problematic because the, this is not complicated uh, that much because it's just a KNN. It's not like some very fancy model. Um, but if you look, yeah. So if you look here. Um, the, this whole paragraph, this is like when I get to that, uh, usually um, this is where it, it's problematic. So they have 32 subject, right? And they watch a bunch of videos. So they have some sort of data and then they're kind of slicing the data um, over time. And then they're using these, these, these snapshot um, of time um, uh, as sample for the classifier. So actually the, the, the classifier is classifying emotion in a, on a 10 second window or something like that, or even shorter sometimes to get more data. And this is where it's problematic. You have 32 subjects and they're using 10 fold cross validation. Um, so what does that mean? It means that the same subject uh, sometimes is both in the training and the test set, right? Um, so conceptually, like if let's say that you, you have 99, 95% accuracy and whatever, what does it mean? when you use this model in the wild. It means that the only way to use this model in the wild is if you already have the data from the participant. Otherwise you cannot use it because the, the, the most likely the data was from a single participant was both in the training and a test set. Um, and that's how it was trained. It's not like 
it's a leave one participant out or something where you're testing on someone that you never saw. So um, this might not look problematic, but if you were to actually like run the analysis um, without, uh, with let's say a, a 32 fold cross validation where you have always uh, a leave one out subject, it, it will go way, way down. Um, EEG data is highly correlated over time and more than this it's highly correlated over same participant just just to 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 um, to show you an example so here's a paper that I've, that I've um, that I've written um, this is in the quality of wearable EEG system using functional connectivity so this is a paper that I've I've, uh, I've put together and what I did basically was uh, record bunch of data on myself multiple time with different headset. Um, so this is actually my brain on a multiple headset. So here we have a high density EG channel uh, headset with 129 um, a channel. Here we have uh, another that it was a dry EG headset with 30 uh, channel, 24. Here this was the Epoch. It's kind of a trendy thing. And then we have the OpenBCI, which is a do-it-yourself uh, kind of a headset. Um, so it, the, the headset from the DAAP um, uh, system is actually this one. Um, it, it's something similar to this one. But the thing is, uh, here it's uh, me when I close my eyes and when I open my eyes. And this is the, the power spectra at alpha. Um, so this is me when I close my eyes, right? And this is me when I open my eyes, right? Um, like I'm, I'm uh, I, for some reason the alpha in my brain is highly skewed toward the right side. I don't know why, but this is like this is. If I see this, I know it's me. Um, I know the pattern of, of alpha when I'm look. I'm closing my eyes and I open my eyes because I've recorded this many times on me, uh, and I've seen um, uh, the same power spectra from other people, uh, from participant, from uh, other um, lab member. I know that. It's, it's very f easy to just look at it. If you already saw your brain pattern, you can tell it's you or not. Um, and the interesting part is here, this is, this is me again on a completely different day, on a completely different headset, yet you see the same kind of pattern, right? And this, the, there's, there's way less channel. And here, same thing, right? Um, you you kind of see this consistently. Those headsets were kind of broken um, but and they were poor but those three headsets which are kind of uh, research grade and they look like uh, the, the other one um, that's that's definitely me and the, the issue here is like this is three different days right and if you look at the same day in multiple time um, uh, across time because this is average you you will see the same thing you will you will see this pattern so if I was a machine learning model and you give me um, for, for validating if I learned something myself and, uh, and the training in both situations. So I close and I open and myself again at different time, let's say 30 seconds afterward or another run. Um, y y this is an easy task. This is not, this is not that difficult because um, the, 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 the pattern is, is so clear, right? Um, the problem is if you give it, um, let's actually look, like um, I don't know if it's alpha uh, or not but like if you give it somebody else um, it might look like this it, it, it will consistently look like this um, so uh, um, if we go back if we go back to this this uh, actual paper what is this model actually uh, learning about like it's not really learning about emotion it's learning about this particular subject reaction to this emotion um, or to this particular situation and kind of do a brain fingerprinting. Um, it's literally that, it's brain fingerprinting. Can I recognize the subject in uh, state A and B at other time, right? And yes, emotion is involved in this, but like it could be like cl close my eyes, um, thinking about something else consistently. Um, so those results um, in light of this, like it, it's not like you you're gonna plug this onto some somebody else, and you will be able to know with 95% accuracy the arousal of the subject. 
because in the, the model never saw, saw this person, right? Um, so it's very difficult to say like, um, is this actually overfitting? Is this bad? Um, it's actually over uh, in my in my view, it's actually overfitting across the across uh, the, the 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 temporal correlation of the of the data set. Um, so that's it. Uh, this is one of the pitfalls I've seen happen over and over again. So if you um, um, if you have any comments on this, um, or uh, okay, you you already seen that. Uh, before I will be happy to discuss it in the comment section. So, like always, uh, have a great week.